the law of one unabridged transcription of contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 49. I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, would you please first give us a reading on the instrument's condition? I am RAW. It is as previously stated. Questioner, thank you. I have a question here from Jim first. He says, for the past nine years I have had what I call frontal lobes experiences in the pre-consciousness state of sleep just before I wake up in the morning. They are a combination of pleasure and pressure which begins in the frontal lobes and spreads in pulses through the whole brain and feels like an orgasm in my brain. I have had over 200 of these experiences and often they are accompanied by visions and voices which seldom make much sense to me. What is the source of these frontal lobes experiences? I am raw. We scan the questionnaire and find some pertinent information already available which regards the physiological disposition of this particular part of the brain. The experiences described and experienced are those distillations which may be experienced after a concentration of effort upon the opening of the gateway, or indigo, mind complex so that experience of a sacramental, or violet, ray may occur. These experiences are the beginnings of that which, as the body, the mind, and the spirit become integrated at the gateway, or indigo, level may then yield not only the experience of joy but the comprehension of intelligent infinity which accompanies it. Thus the body complex orgasm and mind complex orgasm becoming integrated may then set forth the proper gateway for the spiritual complex integration and its use as a shuttle for the sacrament of the fully experienced presence of the one infinite creator. Thus there is much to which the questioner may look forward. Questioner, to Jim do you have any addition to that question? To Jim okay. To all I was wondering. In a previous session you had mentioned the left and right ear tones, if the left and the right brain were somehow related to the polarities of service to self and service to others. Could you comment on this? I am raw. We may comment on this. Questioner, well, please will you go ahead and comment on it? I am raw. The lobes of your physical complex brain are alike in their use of weak electrical energy. The entity ruled by intuition and impulse is equal to the entity governed by rational analysis when polarity is considered. The lobes may both be used for service to self or service to others. It may seem that the rational or analytical mind might have more of a possibility of successfully pursuing the negative orientation due to the fact that, in our understanding too much order is by its essence negative. However, this same ability to structure abstract concepts and to analyze experiential data may be the key to rapid positive polarization. It may be said that those whose analytical capacities are predominant have somewhat more to work with in polarizing. The function of intuition is to inform intelligence. In your illusion the unbridled predominance of intuition will tend to keep an entity from the greater polarizations due to the vagaries of intuitive perception. As you may see, these two types of brain structure need to be balanced in order that the net sum of experiential catalyst will be polarization and illumination, for without the acceptance by the rational mind of the worth of the intuitive faculty the creative aspects which aid in illumination will be stifled. There is one correspondence between right and left and positive and negative. The web of energy which surrounds your bodies contains somewhat complex polarizations. The left area of the head and upper shoulder is most generally seen to be of a negative polarization polarization whereas the right is a positive polarization, magnetically speaking. This is the cause of the tones meaning for you. Questioner, will you expand on the positive and negative magnetic polarizations in general and how it applies to, say, individuals and planets, etc.? I think there is a correlation here, but I'm not sure. I am raw. It is correct that there is a correlation between the energy field of an entity of your nature and planetary bodies, for all material is constructed by means of the dynamic tension of the magnetic field. The lines of force in both cases may be seen to be much like the interweaving spirals of the braided hair. Thus positive and negative wind and interweave forming geometric relationships in the energy fields of both persons, as you would call a mind-body-spirit complex and planets. The negative pole is the south pole or the lower pole. The north or upper pole is positive. The crisscrossings of these spiraling energies form primary, secondary, and tertiary energy centers. You are familiar with the primary energy centers of the physical, mental, and spiritual body complex. Secondary points of the crisscrossing of positive and negative center orientation revolve about several of your centers. The yellow ray center may be seen to have secondary energy centers in elbow, in knee, 
and in the subtle bodies at a slight spacing from the physical vehicle at points describing diamonds about the entity's navel area surrounding the body. One may examine each of the energy centers for such secondary centers. Some of your peoples work with these energy centers, and you call this acupuncture. However, it is to be noted that there are most often anomalies in the placement of the energy centers so that the scientific precision of this practice is brought into question. Like most scientific attempts at precision, it fails to take into account the unique qualities of each creation. The most important concept to grasp about the energy field is that the lower or negative pole will draw the universal energy into itself from the cosmos. Therefore, it will move upward to be met and reacted to by the positive spiraling energy moving downward from within. The measure of an entity's level of ray activity is the locus where in the south pole outer energy has been met by the inner spiraling positive energy. As an entity grows more polarized this locus will move upwards. This phenomenon has been called by your peoples the Kundalini. However, it may better be thought of as the meeting place of cosmic and inner, shall we say, vibratory understanding. To attempt to raise the locus of this meeting without realizing the metaphysical principles of magnetism upon which this depends is to invite great imbalance. Questioner, what process would be the recommended process for correctly awakening, as they say? The Kundalini and of what value would that be? I am raw. The metaphor of the coiled serpent being called upwards is vastly appropriate for consideration by your peoples. This is what you are attempting when you seek. There are, as we have stated, great misapprehensions concerning this metaphor and the nature of pursuing its goal. We must generalize and ask that you grasp the fact that this in effect renders far less useful that which we share. However, as each entity is unique, Generalities are a lot than communicating for your possible edification. We have two types of energy. We are attempting then, as entities in any true color of this octave, to move the meeting place of inner and outer natures further and further along or upward along the energy centers. The two methods of approaching this with sensible method are first, the seating within oneself of those experiences which are attracted to the entity through the South Pole. Each experience will need to be observed, experienced, balanced, accepted and seated within the individual. As the entity grows in self-acceptance and awareness of catalyst the location of the comfortable seating of these experiences will rise to the new true color entity. The experience, whatever it may be, will be seated in red ray and considered as to its survival content and so forth. Each experience will be sequentially understood by the growing and seeking mind-body-spirit complex in terms of survival, then in terms of personal identity, then in terms of social relations, then in terms of universal love, then in terms of how the experience may beget free communication, then in terms of how the experience may be linked to universal energies, and finally in terms of the sacramental nature of each experience. Meanwhile the creator lies within. In the North Pole the crown is already upon the head and the entity is potentially a god. This energy is brought into being by the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy through meditation and contemplation of the self and of the creator. Where these energies meet is where the serpent will have achieved its height. When this uncoiled energy approaches universal love and radiant being the entity is in a state whereby the harvestability of the entity comes now. Questioner, will you recommend a technique of meditation? I am raw. No. Questioner, is it better, or shall I say, does it produce more usable results in meditation to leave the mind, shall I say, as blank as possible? Let it run down, so to speak, or is it better to focus in meditation on some object or something for concentration? I am raw. This shall be the last full query of this work time. Each of the two types of meditation is useful for a particular reason. The passive meditation involving the clearing of the mind, the emptying of the mental jumble which is characteristic of mind complex activity among your peoples, is efficacious for those whose goal is to achieve an inner silence as a base from which to listen to the Creator. This is an useful and helpful tool and is by far the most generally useful type of meditation as opposed to contemplation or prayer. The type of meditation which may be called visualization has as its goal not that which is contained in the meditation itself. Visualization is the tool of the adept. Those who learn to hold visual images in mind are developing an inner concentrative power that can transcend boredom and discomfort. When this ability has become crystallized in an adept the adept may then do polarizing in consciousness without external action which can affect the planetary consciousness. This is the reason for existence of the so-called white magician. Only those wishing to pursue the conscious raising of planetary vibration will find visualization to be a particularly satisfying type of meditation.
contemplation or the consideration in a meditative state of an inspiring image or text is extremely useful also among your peoples, and the faculty of will called praying is also of a potentially helpful nature. Whether it is indeed an helpful activity depends quite totally upon the intentions and objects of the one who prays. May we ask if there are any brief queries at this time? Questioner, I will just ask if there is anything we may do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact and if the two periods per week are still appropriate. I am raw. We request your care in the placement of the neck support for this entity as it is too often careless. You are conscientious and your alignments are well. The timing, if we may use that expression, of the sessions is basically correct. However, you are to be commended for observing fatigue in the circle and refraining from a working until all were in love, harmony, and vital energy is one being. This is, and will continue to be, most helpful. I am raw. I leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. And Obsession 49.